In this video, we are going to understand about S3 vectors. We'll look into how to create vector bucket and create index in it. We'll also see a Python code to insert the vectors in the bucket and also the query to fetch it. By the end of this video, the goal is to understand the end-to-end -end flow for S3 vectors, how to ingest the vectors inside it and retrieve it. So before understanding how to ingest the data in vectors, S3 vectors, let's understand what is S3 vector. So recently Amazon has come up with the S3 vectors where you can store the vectors in S3 also. This is the cost optimized way to, for storing the vectors. It can help to reduce up to 90% of cost. So we already have S3 which is a reliable and scalable solution for storing the object level thing. But with S3 vectors, now we can even store the vectors. The main use case where we have to use the S3 vectors is something where our application does not need the higher throughput and faster latencies. Basically, this is for the long term storage solution for vectors where the access of data is infrequent. Even though this is being uh, written on the document, but we can use this in all the applications because they are promising the latency in sub seconds which for the s3 vectors is not that bad given the cost is saved by 90 percent so the use cases where this particular video could be useful is if you are implementing semantic search you are implementing rag or ai agent or whether you are trying to understand how to make the tiered search strategy so this video will help you to understand the S3 vectors and its implementation. Uh, let's understand the overall architecture of this S3 vector search. So there are three components. One is generate vector embedding. Second is storing those vectors in S3 vectors. And the third is the vector search, which we have to do. We have to take the user question and generate the vectors and search it in the vectors. For ingestion part, we'll take the document and pass it to the embedding models that will create some vector data. That data will be pushed to the S3 vectors, which will be stored in vector index. While querying the user search, what we will do, we'll take the user question and on the basis of that, we'll create another vector. That vector will be searched in the vector index and the response from that query will be given back to the user as the output. So let's start with the implementation part. The first thing uh, for S3 vectors is to log into your AWS account. And once you log in, you can go through S3. When you open this S3, you can see a separate section for vector buck buckets. So you have to create one vector bucket. I've already created one for media embeddings. For this demo, I'll also create another one. And I'll show you how to create it exactly. So when you click that, you have to give the name. For naming convention, mostly uh, you can provide the keywords. They have a little bit naming convention which you can follow. And you can have the hyphens. I'll put the media embeddings one just for this use case and keep the encryption as it is. I'll create the bucket. So creating bucket is as simple as this. Once the bucket is created, We'll move on to the second step. The second step is to create vector index inside this bucket. One single bucket can have around 1000 vector, vector index. And we can use the older bucket also, but uh, just for demoing, I'll use the, another, the newer bucket and I'll create that. For creating a vector, you have to provide the vector name. Vector is like a database for most of the MySQL queries and you have to provide the dimension. This dimension is something which you'll be getting with your embedding models. So you have to understand what embedding model is creating as a dimension. So for this example, I'll take the dimension as 1024. So we have to see the embedding models which will generate 1024 dimension. Then we have to select which distance matrix we wanted to compute uh, for calculating the distance. There are two options given. One is cosine, another is Euclidean distance. So if you wanted to have the similarity search where you does not 
uh, you wanted to actually have the similarity between the two vectors so that then cosine will be useful and if you wanted to understand the distance magnitude also then the euclidean should be useful but because we wanted to understand about the similarity between two vectors i'll go ahead with the cosine one in the additional settings you can provide the some metadata for the non-filterable metadata if you want to but for this demo i'll keep it as it is after this i'll create the index this will create the index and you can see like inside the vector bucket you'll get one index so one thing like uh, most of the things in this bucket you cannot change once it's created like the dimension you cannot change distance matrix which you have created for getting the distance won't be changed once created so if you wanted to change it you have to delete this and create the new one and move all the data to that particular new bucket so with this we are able to create one vector bucket for us and inside it we have created one index so next we'll move on to the code that will ingest the data to these but this particular vector index once we are able to create the bucket and vector index inside it now let's move to the next step that is ingesting the data inside this vector bucket so for that uh, i have written one script python script that will ingest the data in that particular vector index for this we will be using boto3 and we will be using sentence transformers for transformers from hugging face as a embedder this particular embedder which we are using is all reverter large v1 this will create the dimensions of 1024 the same dimension which we were actually mentioned in our index creation so we have to make sure that if this dimension is different we won't be able to push this particular embedding the flow is uh, you'll start with the data you have the data here this data you wanted to create an embedding with this data you'll create the embeddings with the help of this particular embedding model you can use this model or you can use the apis provided by openai or some other providers and you can create the embeddings once those embeddings are created here in the array you'll put this embedding inside this particular bucket for this you have to call the s3 vectors put vectors method in this particular vector you have to prov provide the bucket name and you have to provide the index name and the all the vectors which you have created in this particular uh, data you have to mention that this is the metadata which you can provide this is a filterable metadata so if you want to filter the data on the basis of sci-fi you can do that like you can provide the genre and you can provide the kind of the genre this movie belongs to it can belong to sci-fi or family you have to tell that and you'll get it so the steps is you have to create s3 vector client this is how you have created it and then you have to push all the embedding and the for embeddings you will get the text and use the embedding model to create the embeddings so once this is done you can ingest it for this uh, i'll just run this particular script and this script will create the embeddings out of our data and push it into s3 bucket so we can see that this has successfully ingested into s3 so our data is ingested in s3 the next step is to fetch the data for fetching the data uh, i have written another script for fetching what we have to do we have to get the query from the user on the basis of query we have to use the same embedding model which we have created while ingestion and we have to create the embedding with the embedding we have to use another method that is query vector this math with that that method we are able to query the s3 let's look into the complete flow this is where we have created the client for s3 and then we have used the model from the hugging face this model will create the same dimension and we have used the same model this need to be same model and then this is the user input user is inputting the adventures of in space this particular question is being get converted into embedding this embedding is passed on in the query vector inside this particular s3 vector client query vector so on the basis of it we are asking to get the top three data which are matching to this particular vector and we wanted to return the distance 
and we also wanted to get a, return the metadata in it. Similarly, if you wanted to do the filtering on the basis of the journal, which we have provided in metadata, metadata, we can do it like this. We have to provide, just provide the filters and we'll get the data. Let's try to run this particular code and see how exactly this works. I'll run this particular uh, Python code and this will go into the S3 and try to find the similar vectors, which is similar to our user intent and we'll get the data here. So here we got the answer. We have the two queries. One is without filters and one is with filter. So this is without filter. We are getting the data and this is the with filter. We are getting the data. So this distance is actually a cosine distance. It is different from a cosine similarity. I have mentioned this in our readme file. So I'll show you the readme file. So here, like the distance which uh, we which we are getting is the cosine distance, cosine distance and cosine similarity, both are uh, actually different. So if you look into the cosine similarity, the range is between minus one to plus one. So we are have the dot formula where with which we are getting the cosine similarity. And if we inverse that, like minus one, then cosine similarity, then we got the cosine distance. So the distance which we are get, getting in this particular query is the cosine distance. So this particular distance zero means the perfect match and the uh, more it will go towards two, it means it is not that similar. Near to two, it is completely opposite. So this is the small video where we are able to understand how to ingest the data in S3 vector. And we have shown how to ingest the data and retrieve the data from S3 vector. By the end of this video, I hope you are able to understand the complete flow and this will help you greatly to reduce the cost by storing the data in S3 vector. So anyone who is trying to build some AI application and using vector data source, this should be a good starting point because this is saving a lot of cost and the latency, even though it's not that fast, but still it's manageable. So I'll highly recommend to use this S3 vectors for your new use case. And let me know in the comment which use case you are choosing for using S3 vector. I'll be more than happy to answer your any query inside the comment. So I hope you enjoy the video. Till the next time, keep learning, keep building. Goodbye.